All right, we're going to talk about five things today. Uh, topic of today's conversation is sales skills. These are the skills that I want you to work on. Number one, asking the right questions. Number two, everything you do with a potential client is a demonstration of what they get when they work with you. Number three, don't say no for other people. Number four, don't be a seller, be a buyer. And finally, number five, fortune is in the follow-up. <laughs> okay, so let's start with asking the right questions. Sometimes no means yes, so let's start there. If I can ask a question, the answer is no, but the answer is really yes, then that is a great question. It's a very st strategic way of getting yes. Let me give you an example. So I'm talking to a for sale by owner or expired, and would you be offended if I stopped by tomorrow to take a look at your home so I could potentially bring you an offer? Well, nobody wants to be offended. Chances are you're going to get no. Now, no in this situation actually means yes. If I call Debbie and she's an expired listing and I ask her, hey, Debbie, just out of curiosity, where would you where were you going if your home sold? Debbie says, Tampa. So what's in Tampa? My family's in Tampa. Have you given up on that goal of moving to Tampa in order to be close to your family? You're probably going to hear no. Well, no in this situation actually means yes. It means yes, they want to sell their home, which opens the door for you to schedule the appointment. It, again, if you're talking to an expired listing and you ask them, if a buyer showed up with a full price offer tomorrow, would you reject the offer? You're going to hear no, which actually means yes. Asking the right questions also means play chess, don't play checkers. Let me explain. If I'm asking questions and I have an end goal in mind, then I am asking strategic questions in order to get to my end goal. My end goal could be to schedule the appointment. And if I'm asking yes, no questions, I'm only asking yes, no questions when I know the answer I'm gonna get. I'm asking them in order to set up the next question. Have you given up on your goal? No. Then if I could show you how I could sell your home for more money in less time, you would be interested in seeing how I could do that, wouldn't you? I'm playing chess, not checkers. Ask questions in order to set up the next question. Be a strategic question asker. Now, one of the things you should do every day, and five years ago, I'm, I'm a coach for MAPS. So if anybody was at KW, you know, MAPS Coaching. I was a coach when Diana Kokoska was running the coaching program. And one of the exercises that we had to do in order to become a coach, so I'm in, I forget what they called it, but like boot camp in order to become a coach. One of the things we had to do every day was submit like 50 questions. And that's a hard exercise to do. And of course, we would get the questions back with this one sucks, this one sucks, and and feedback, which was pretty harsh, just like that. And more than often, we would get out of the 50 questions you ask, two or three are keepers, throw everything else away. Now, what? why am I sharing that with you? Because I want you to become a better question asker. And one of the things you can do in order to ask better questions is actually spend time every day with a notebook and a pen and make a list of questions. And then ask yourself, which of these questions are really great questions? Send it to a friend, have them look at them and ask them, tell me which questions I should keep and which ones I should get rid of. Remember the conversation is never over until you run out of questions. Be, ask better questions and have more questions to ask. Okay, number two, everything you do with a potential client is a demonstration of what they're going to get when they work with you. So three questions every buyer and seller is asking themselves about you whenever they meet with you. Number one, can I trust you? Two, do you care about me? And three, do you know what you're doing? Or can you help me? Can I trust you? Do you care about me? And can you help me? Now, it's your job to convey the answers to those questions 
Uh, yes, yes, and yes. Now, everything you do is a demonstration of what they're going to get when they work with you. So if I schedule an appointment to meet with Darren, the appointment's at 4 p.m., and I show up at 4.10, I'm already demonstrating what it's going to be like to work with me. I, I'm, I don't care about Darren. I didn't care enough to be on time <clears throat> or call ahead of time and say, hey, Darren, I'm running 10 minutes late. I apologize. Would you like to reschedule or are we still on for today? Everything you do is a demonstration of what they're going to get when they work with you. When I call an expired listing, one of the questions that I'm going to ask them is just out of curiosity, if your home would have sold, Dave, where were you moving? Now, the reason I'm asking you this question is because I have other properties that are currently on the market, and it is my job to find a buyer for those properties. And you might be a buyer for one of those homes. I mean, that's exactly what you would want me to do if you were to hire me, isn't it? You're demonstrating what it's like to work with you. In other words, Diani, if you hire me, I'm going to get on the phone every single day and I'm going to look for a buyer for your home. I'm going to hustle. I'm going to work hard in order to find that buyer for you. If they call you and, and you don't return the call, you're demonstrating what it's like to work with you and they don't want to work with somebody that doesn't return their calls. Answer your freaking phone. Too much passion in that one. Sorry. <laughs> Real estate agents, unfortunately, one of the things, one of the most common complaints among buyers and sellers out there about you is you don't answer your phone, you don't follow up, you don't communicate. Now, I see that as an advantage, Todd. I see that as an advantage because if I know that, then I'm going to be different than everybody else. I'm going to answer my phone. I'm going to return calls. Yeah, sorry, I'm in the text, rabbit. <laughs> Apologize. Demonstrate how you're going to work. You're a professional. You want their inner thought to be, I'm dealing with a professional. When you show up and you know the local market and you're able to have intelligent local economists of choice conversations, you're able to have intelligent strategic pricing conversations, you're demonstrating what it's like to work with you versus the average real estate agent who lists the house, put it in the MLS, put a sign in the front yard, and then pray that somebody else brings a buyer. They don't really bring a whole lot of knowledge to the relationship. Am I dealing with a pro? No, I'm dealing with an atypical real estate agent that everybody else thinks about when they think about real estate agents. Be different, be a professional. Demonstrate what it's like to work with you. Number three, don't say no for other people. How do you say no for other people? You judge away opportunity. There's one way. I get calls from real estate agents all over the country and they're like, John, you know, I did exactly what you said and I got the appointment. But now, Todd, as soon as I hear but, I know what's coming next, Nathan. I, what's coming next is they're going to tell me all the reasons why it was a lousy appointment, why that seller's not motivated to sell their home, why they're out of their mind, why they're asking $100,000 more for their home than what it's worth, or they're only offering to pay X percent. All of the reasons why it's not a good opportunity. So they, they're saying no by walking away. When you walk away, you say no for the other person. Now, that person might have hired you, but you never gave them a chance because you said no for them. When you follow up with somebody for one or two times, and then you stop following up, you're saying no for them because you judge away out the, the opportunity because you're, 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 you're judging this lead as a bad lead. If I wanted to sell my home and I'm going to sell it in a year from now, raise your hand if you are going to be selling real estate a year from now. Put your hand in the air. Now, let me ask you another a question. If I'm selling my home in a, in a year, is that a bad lead? No, it's not a bad lead. Uh, to me, it's the same as somebody selling their home next week. If the commission on that sale is $10,000, they're both $10,000 leads. 
One is a week from now, one is a year from now, and a year from now, I'm going to be selling homes. When I used to do open houses and buyers would come in and, and they would say things like, yeah, yeah, we're buying, but not for another year. My response was always, awesome, I'm going to be selling homes a year from now. I'd love to earn the opportunity to be your agent. Who cares? Don't judge away the opportunity. All right. Number four, be a, don't be a seller, be a buyer. This is good. So in every conversation, there is a buyer and there is a seller. Now, who has the other upper hand? The person selling something or the person buying something? Raise your hand if you think it's the buyer who has the upper hand. Every hand should be going up right now. It's 100% the buyer. The buyer is deciding whether or not they want to buy. The seller is trying to make a sell. A lot of you are working like sellers and you're not working like buyers. If you pulled the local MLS numbers and you looked at how many homes are being sold in your local market, I promise you it's in the hundreds. Now, if your goal is to sell every 30 days, by the way, it's in the hundreds every 30 days, I promise. Okay. If you have a seller mindset, then... You, you're hearing things and saying things like the, the market's horrible, there's nobody buying, there's nobody selling, there's no inventory, interest rates are too high. Those are all seller mindset conversations. When you're thinking like a buyer, well, there's 100 homes being sold in my market every day. My goal is three. Life is good. Now I'm, I'm interviewing potential sellers to see which ones are the right sellers for me to represent in the sale of their home. I'm not coming from a place of desperation. I'm coming from a place of choosing who I want to work with. Attorneys think like that. 100% they think like that. If you call an attorney and you've got a potential case, they're not on the other end of the line going, oh, yay, this is so exciting. Somebody finally called me. Hooray, I want to work with you. They're asking questions to see if you're a good client. How do they decide if you're a good client or not? Can they win your case? That's it. If they can win your case, they're, you're a good client. Your mindset when you're talking to a seller is, do you? what's your motivation? Are you willing to do whatever it takes to get your home sold? Now, if the answer to that question is yes, then I want to talk to you. If you're no, then I'm not the right agent for you. I'm thinking like a buyer. I'm not thinking like a seller. As a trainer, coach, and business builder, part of my job is I recruit real estate agents. And there are 54,000 real estate agents in my local MLS. Now, let me see, pick a different name here. Uh, Jeremy, when I call a real estate agent to talk about the possibility of becoming a part of Deets and Deets Real Estate Consultants, uh, powered by EXP Realty, I can either have a buyer mindset or a seller mindset. The problem with most recruiters is they have a seller mindset. They want to recruit. You know how they decide if they want to recruit you or not? Are you breathing? Raise your hand if you're breathing. Then I want to recruit you. That's a typical real estate recruiter. Now, my mindset is there's 54,000 real estate agents in, in my local MLS, Jeremy, and I'm gonna build this organization here locally to about 200 agents. Now I'm making calls in order to find the best 200. I'm thinking like a buyer. I'm not thinking like a seller. When you're negotiating a contract, if you have a seller mentality, then you'll do absolutely anything to put that deal together, including giving away your money. Raise your hand if you've ever done that. Of course you have. Raise your hand if you've had a seller ask you to do that. Of course you have. And when you're thinking, when you have a seller mentality, you're, you need the deal to come together so you can pay your bills. Then you're desperate. But when you've got 20 sales pending on your whiteboard and you're looking at all of the sales on, on my whiteboards right over here, and you're looking at all of those sales that are pending, and you're like, you have a buyer mindset. You're not attached to the next deal. You're going to be a better negotiator. You are always going to be a better negotiator when you don't need the deal to come together. 
And when the seller comes to me and asks me to start giving away my money, my response, one of my responses is, I'm never going to be more motivated to sell your home than you are. I want your home to sell. I will do absolutely everything to get your home sold, but I'm never going to want it more than you do. Now, does that mean I'll never negotiate my commission? No, of course not. It, when we have an offer, if I need to give up money in order to make the deal work, I will because I'm a deal maker, not a deal breaker. Now, giving up money doesn't mean here's how y'all think when it comes to giving up commission, by the way. Y'all thinking in, in percentages. You always do. Raise your hand if I'm right. You think in percentages. I'll give up a percent, right? Stop doing that. Sure, Mr. Seller, Mrs. Seller, I'll be more than glad to lower my, be, my fee by $500 if you accept this offer. Now, 1% of 700000 is $7,000. You can give up $700,000 or you can give up $500. You're showing flexibility. You're showing that you're willing to do what it takes to get their home sold, that if they're willing to lower their price, you'll give up some money in order to make the deal work. But you don't have to give up $7,000 to make it work. That's seller mindset. Be a buyer. You're part of the negotiation here. It's your money, Todd. If I give up $500, are you accepting this offer today? Hell yeah. Let's do it. Glad to do it, Todd. Now, that's a win. Todd feels like he's winning because I gave up money. He is winning, by the way. I'm winning because I didn't give up $7,000. Never give up money until you have an offer on their home. Never. Until you have an offer on their home, the commission doesn't matter. All of those discount brokers out there that are working for two, three, four percent, whatever it is, who cares? It doesn't matter until they have an offer. Ask that seller, well, so and so said they'll work for four percent. How much money are you are you saving by hiring that agent if they never bring you an offer? Well, I'm not saving anything. You're actually losing money. Six months on the market, holding costs of $3,000 a month. You just lost $18,000 trying to save $7,000. I didn't think about it like that. Hmm. So if you're asking me if I'm willing to give up money, yeah, of course I am. Just not today. When we have an offer on your home. After all, if I were able to sell your home for 5% above the asking price, would you care? What my fee is? No, I wouldn't. Well, let's get it. Let's see if we could do that. And when I have an offer, if I need to give up money, I'll do it because I'm a deal maker, not a deal breaker. Think like a buyer, not like a seller. All right. Last on my list is the fortune is in the follow-up. You know, the average real estate agent will follow up one or two times. Now, let's just say that the average is 50% of everybody that met with that person. All right. So 50% of your competition goes away in the first week, two weeks, 25% of everybody that's left will follow, will, will stop following up within 30 days. Now, all of those agents that you were competing against all of a sudden become a very small group. 98% will give up before the seller decides to sell their home. All you got to do is be the last person who's still calling. Sometimes you're going to get the listing just because you're the last person hanging around. <laughs> You've created emotional proximity because you follow up forever, because you reject rejection, because no is not a word that lives in your vocabulary. No simply means not yet. You understand that people will never change their mind, but they will make a new decision based on new information, which takes us back to questions, by the way. If you have the right questions and you're gonna you're gonna give people new information that'll allow them to make a new decision, and that new decision will be to boy, it's been two years since I've done this. See if anybody remembers it. That new decision will be to hire me. <laughs> Here we go. All right. I just scared everybody in the house. All right, guys, talk to me.
you know, coming up in the months, um, you know, with this new ruling, I mean, it couldn't be any better to think like a buyer than ever before. Yeah. Yeah. I, I you know, Nathan, I absolutely agree. Um, yeah. There's going to be two different two different groups of people that are in the real estate industry in the coming months. Those who are trying to get their fair share and those who don't have any idea what that means. Fair share. What is that? I have no idea. I know what my goal is. I'm going to get it. Now, everybody else, you guys can figure that out. Charlene, I'm so sorry if my screen was freezing. I don't know if everybody else was seeing that. I apologize if that was the case. Hopefully for all of you, it was just Charlene. It was I'm just Charlene. Okay. All right. It was the Wi-Fi. All right, girl. All right. I want to hear two more ahas, then we'll jump. I, you know, that's a, by the way, when you're speaking, don't ever do what I just did because all of a sudden everybody's going to freeze up. All right. The, I promise. John, I got your back. I, I won't. Thank freeze. you, Todd. Thank you. Um, hey. All right. So you said, can I trust you? Do I care about you? And what was the third one? Do I know what I'm doing? Do I know what I'm doing? Can I Thank trust you? you? Do you care about me? Do you know what you're doing? Do you know what you're doing? It's just another way of saying, can, can you help me? By the way, for those of you who care about are me. recruiters like I am, when you're talking to a real estate agent, they're asking the same three questions. Can I trust you? Do you care about me? Can you help me? Dave, were you in there? I'm sorry, buddy. Somebody no, was. No, you're good. Yeah, Somebody. I was just trying to, to, to give you the third answer. Um, Thank you. I should have come I, to you and just said, Dave, what is it? Well, this is, I'll speak. This is my first time on this call. Um, I was at a, a soccer game with Brian Copeland last night and he was telling me how great this call was and said, you got to get in here. And so uh, he did not uh, disappoint. Um, I took a lot of notes and I, I didn't even actually know I had this otter pilot going. So I'm going to go back and read the transcript. But one of the things in Denzel speech saying, hey, if you want to do what I do, you got to do what I've done. Yeah. And so that was my thinking when Brian talked to me yesterday. I was like, if I want to sell more, if I want to be in those rooms, I got to be in those rooms. So appreciate you guys. Well, welcome. We're glad you're here. I, uh, I think the, <clears throat> your follow-up comment should resonate with every one of us in a huge way. Mm. So many times we give up so early. Mm. And I saw a Ryan Serhant like, Instagram video pop up. And he met somebody in a coffee shop when he was a nobody in New York. And he just recently sold that person and their ex $50 million in real estate like nine years later. And, you know, you just don't know when it's going to come through. And there's so many different ways of follow up. It doesn't mean you have to call them every week or every month, but there's so many touch points. And that is really something I've honed in in my business. Those touch points and staying in front of people through multiple different facets. Um, because people, you can never judge a book by its cover. You don't know who they know. Good stuff. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. <laughs> Good stuff. All right. That's a wrap for today. Tomorrow is scripted role play day. I'm looking forward to tomorrow.